Hello, Thomas. It's so lovely to have you here. <laughs> um, I was wondering just to start, so I would love to take this opportunity for you just to tell me a little bit about yourself to start with. So if you could just tell me, first of all, your name and where you live, actually. Yeah, so I'm uh, Thomas Palumbo. I live and I work in uh, Switzerland and uh, I am a physiotherapist uh, for now it's been uh, six years. I, uh, I, uh, I did my, uh, my study in, uh, in Paris and then uh, I moved a bit near, near Paris, then Reunion Island and in Switzerland. I'm here for now three years and I work in a private, uh, private practice. Oh, amazing. So you've been a physiotherapist for, you said, six years now. Yes. Yeah. What made you want to go into that as a profession? Why did you choose physiotherapy? Mm -hmm. When I had some choice in, uh, in my study, I, uh, I had the choice of a physiotherapist or something in a pharmacy and uh, something like that, but I didn't want to go that way. So physiotherapist was a uh, something I was more uh, more in uh, the, the point to work with the patient uh, not only one time like a medicine uh, a GP but something like you can follow them on the on the rehab uh, and um, the possibility we have in physiotherapy is to have uh, some specialties uh, for for me it's uh, in manual therapy or now a bit more in a uh, psychological social approach uh, yeah. like we did on the on the course so the thing is yeah you can have specialty like uh, only with uh, children only with uh, older people or for uh, uh, musculoskeletal uh, point of view etc so this thing that you can have uh, it's uh, yeah very specific in your job and you can change around the uh, around specialty so you liked a lot of the variety that the job would offer, yes. I hear, and you get to stay with patients for a longer time, which is a really nice this, yeah, relationship. Think, uh, yeah, to yeah. Build something with the patient is something uh, I love, yeah. Yeah, and I think as a physio, so I've worked in healthcare a long time, and I know that physios work really hard on their CPD. So is that something that you have to do as part of your practice? And what does that look like for you? What's the CPD? So CPD is professional development. So here in the UK, physios have to engage in some kind of continuing professional development. Is that something oh, yeah. that you have to do as a physio? Uh, in it's Yeah, it's not uh, called personal development, but you have uh, each year to have courses and, uh, and something like that, classes uh, which are uh, validated or not by... Uh, the, the the country you live in but uh, yeah every year you have to take courses and still uh, still learn about healthcare yeah I think that's something a lot of people don't realize is that people like you work really hard to kind of still keep up with the latest information because it moves quickly right there's a lot yeah, of new quickly. information yeah to to kind of take on board so I was really privileged that you joined my program so the behavior change interventions course um what made you want to do the course what was it that that prompted it your decision mm, I think it's been now yeah uh, three years that I uh, I thought that in physiotherapy we have a lot of information about uh uh, you know, physical stuff that we learn in, uh, at school and in our uh, classes you have uh, our CPD but uh, I, I felt like there was something missing with the communication part and the uh, psychosocial part of the uh, rehabilitation or uh, uh, practice and uh, I first had a, a one-year course about uh, stress and anxiety uh, management, something like that. But uh, it, this course um, made me find some uh, some hints about what we can really uh, learn and have to, to give to the patient as a physio, not only uh, psychological uh, uh, exercises or tools, but uh, a lot about how can we communicate better or uh, just the, the 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 way we we have our uh, our session uh, with uh, with the patient 
and what we can work about the way we we do it uh the their uh, uh how they will go after that uh will be better if we are something uh more to to give them during the the session so so yeah it was the beginning and then uh every year i try to find courses like like yours about those uh psychosocial uh stuff yeah so that's interesting that you said so it didn't you didn't really have any psychology in your training is that right no in the, wow. in the initial training we had some like uh, uh psychiatry for uh, maybe two hours uh, the main pathology uh, etc but nothing really uh, practical in, mm. uh, or maybe we had a uh, psychology of uh, 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 learning or, or training but very something uh, uh, th uh, theoretical about cognitive function when we learn something etc but not something practical to do or have with a, a patient wow. i I think you probably heard me say before, I always find it amazing when people say it's not been part of their training. Um, mm. Would you agree that, not that this video yeah. is to encourage educators to bring it into their, their training, but the fact that you're working with human beings and, you know, as we cover in the course, it starts with how you think, how you feel, to, to mm. not acknowledge maybe the psychology and how you might work with someone, how you talk to someone to yeah. elicit change and to help them. Um, I find that surprising, and yeah, yeah. I don't agree. I don't. <laughs> I think that uh, uh, people who make classes, etc., for for the school, uh, I think they uh, they think that this is something you learn uh, on the field or in, uh, during an internship, but I think they they don't need uh, we as a student we don't need some classes, etc., about this. Yeah. Would you have liked some classes on that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, because I think it's, uh, uh, for example, the, during all the, the course uh, we had together, I had uh, an intern on, uh, with me uh, during the uh, eight weeks, and, uh, and I told him about what I've learned uh, those two or three years about the psychosocial stuff and what we learned during the, the course. And uh, it was lovely. He, he was, yeah, we, we didn't have that in, at school. Mm. And it's something very important. So he, the, the, the way he had those information and the tools we, we learned together and he, he could use it uh, during the internship when he was with me. It was oh, really, that's really great. Uh, so yeah, even if he's still a student, so maybe if, uh, even if he's on the, the end of the, the, the road of the, the studying, but uh, yeah, he learned uh, very great things and, uh, yeah, that's something, even as a, as a student, it's very cool to, to have it uh, oh. very, uh, very early. I think. That's lovely. So someone learned by osmosis by seeing what you were doing as well. Exactly. Yay, but, uh, he, did a lot. he did a lot because it was the, <laughs> the end of, the, of, his, uh, of his study. And yeah. uh, so he worked a lot, but I, I, so, so I had some, some hints, hints and... Uh, and, uh, and tools to give them to 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 go further when uh, when he was uh, with the patient that's amazing I love that's so exciting to me you know how excited I get when I hear what people have been sharing on the <laughs> course so I mean you said there that you 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 obviously took some things away it, would you say that there were some key things that you took away from the course specifically so the um, specifically yeah yeah I think there is really three Three keys that uh, I think I use maybe now every day. Uh, the first one was it's about the um, the the feeling the the how do patient feel uh, I, uh, every day when the, uh, people we we do some exercises or when they they talk about the, the pain or the activities they they had uh, maybe the, the yesterday. Uh, I don't ask them only uh, how. How did it go? But how did they feel about it? And I think the the answer is is different, and uh, and I think we we can work on something else with the with the feeling more and less on the okay it was good bad or or hard etc. But how mm. do they feel during the activity or how do they feel their pain or how 
so yeah, about the, the feeling, I think we can have a, a, a deeper conversation and go further on the, on the, on the session. So yeah, the, the feeling. The second one was the, the why, the why, why, which is the, the, uh, the most important thing, uh, I think. But uh, the thing is, uh, before the course, uh, uh, I tend to ask about why they would engage in physio or why do they do this or do that. But uh, now I think it's more, uh, uh, I think it's more on with every patient, I tend to ask them why they, they want to engage or uh, it's more, uh, yeah, it's one hour with, uh, with uh, each and every one. And uh, um, do you find and, and then, I... sorry, I was saying, do you find that you get a deeper reason then if you ask the question and you kind of pursue mm, the answer? Yeah, or uh, I tend to to try to get something deeper on the why and not just, okay, it's to get rid of the pain and, uh, and that's okay. And, um, and the last thing was the, the definition when um, when uh, someone told to talk to me about their pathology or or their feeling i asked them what do they uh, what do they mean by that uh, for the, their feeling or what did they uh, get as an information for uh, the pathology that the, the the gp told them or the imagery they they, they have so uh, so yeah the, i tried to with their own words to, to get about what they think about the about them or the the pathology or the, the word they, they use in a, in a everyday practice. That's amazing. And it's when you describe it like that, it sounds so simple. You're just yeah. asking someone why <laughs> asking for a bit more information, getting them to define terms, but it's would you agree? I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but very simple tweaks to what you're doing already. So, you know, yeah, I think things, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a more simple thing, but I think the, those things uh, that weren't uh, taught in, uh, in, in our classes, uh, initial course, etc. Uh, I think they're fundamental and easy to, to use uh, in everyday practice. And uh, so to have those tools and just to be told that, yeah, you can ask some simple question, but with uh, the right word or... Uh, or uh, on this way you can use it. I think we can have a bit more information from the patient and then we can go further than just, just a, a simple question as a, where is your pain? Uh, how, how do you, on a scale of one to 10, etc. So yeah, with just open questions and, uh, and a bit uh, aimed question, yeah. we can have a bit more uh, information. So. Would you say then, because I've not heard someone describe it the way you have, it sounds like uh, it's giving you like a, a, a structure almost for how to kind of run through a consultation. It's helped to kind of provide the, the punctuation to the conversation that you're having. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when we can have a bit more about how they, they feel, how do they get, what do they want, I think it's something I took... Uh, uh, for me or on my uh, uh, report uh, uh, and that's something I tend to to remind them when I don't know even in two or three sessions if the the evolution is, is in no go or I don't know I try to to use the the words or the or the the thing that they they, they, they got me yes. in the present session to go a bit uh, a bit more to motivate them or to tend to get deeper with them top student thomas <laughs> 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 yeah that's amazing because that's what we talk about again is that reincorporation of their language back into the the rest of the conversation would you say then that it's helping you to help your patients change then that kind of these conversations are helping mm -hmm. them do that mm -hmm. I think so. Maybe not uh, very straight away. Yeah. But the thing is to, yeah, talk to them about their feeling and not uh, how or how they are today. For example, yeah. to get some deepness, yeah, in, uh, in the conversation or vocabulary, etc. I think, uh, yeah, we can. 
make something change a bit uh, a bit easier than just a classic question i would say that's amazing and how would you say it's changed has it changed you and how you feel about your work in any way has it helped you to uh, feel differently or yeah uh, mm. all the classes and courses i take uh, on the on this field on the psychological uh, uh, area it's uh, especially when we have some patient and we we don't have the the right tools or what we learned was a uh, is not enough or they, they don't go anywhere and uh, and i think it's a it's a good way to reconceptualize the 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 work we have as a as a physio and with all those tools i can then okay go on some kind of way especially with people uh, with multiple uh, pains and uh, and problematic uh, pathology it's something to, uh, that helped me to aim uh on a direction to go in a direction for what i will what can i do for them mm. and uh, and then if i have the, the direction i can get some exercise or or manual therapy etc the physical physio stuff but mm. uh, yeah it's uh, i think it's a great tool to to to, to have the, the right focus and then we can use the the more classical stuff i think on with that that's so it works it works well alongside the practice that you already have and you, it sounds like you can integrate it really easily yeah. into your yeah into your work that's lovely I'm so pleased that you've <laughs> been able to use it would you say that you could use tools quite quickly so was it quite quick when we did the when we did the sessions that you could try yeah, yeah I think because it's uh, all about the 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 question we ask uh, to the patients and so yeah it's on a the, the communication part so uh, that's something we use uh, every day and uh, with each, each patient so yes I, I tend to 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 use it uh, very quickly I, at least for the why the the feeling the the, mm -hmm. the vocabulary thing we on the on the course we had some more thing about uh, motivational interviewing which is a, a bit uh, a bit bigger as a, so uh, I think uh, I will uh, train a, a bit more for this, but uh, yeah, all those uh, quick things we can use in our uh, communication, uh, I tend to use it quickly. That's amazing. And just one last question, I think. If anyone was listening to you speak and they were thinking about doing the course, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? Mm, I think they can go uh, <laughs> <laughs> without any problem, uh, especially if it's their uh, first uh, class in this area of uh, mm. psychosocial uh, uh, class I think it's a, it's a really good one to to start with because we have very very practical tool uh, right away as uh, I spoke before and uh, if it's not the, the first one I think it's a, it's a good one too because uh, there is some uh, I think it was uh, the day number three with all the uh, positive wording etc we we had in the on the course, it was something that uh, I already uh, have in, uh, in other classes before. So it's a good refresh. And with uh, another point of view of um, behavioral change, uh, it's, a, it's a good way to, to use those tools in a, in a different way. So uh, it's for uh, every practitioner to, who wants to, 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 be, to, to be better in the psychosocial field. That's amazing. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy day. I can see that you're still at work. <laughs> for telling us all about it. And um, yeah, very, very grateful. Thank you for your time, Thomas. Pleasure.